those who don't know me, my name is Bob Nagger. Those who do know me, well, I'm still Bob Nagger. <laughs> we are going to be talking about the red line. Well, I will tell you, having been doing these a few years, this venue <coughs> is far superior to many you have. So the water is always cold. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you want it to be or not. Even in the shower. Yeah. Uh, I think that is one particular wing. Yeah. Holy smokes, it's cold. Yes, it was. Can we just bring that just for the for those of those that are without their wives here? <laughs> I think that was, yeah. <laughs> the, the plan for cold shower. <laughs> okay. We're going to be talking about official visits and introductions. How many senior deacons I got in here? <laughs> I mean, welcome. Yeah. Junior wardens. Senior wardens. Dynamite. Junior deacon. The junior deacon. Yay! You're going to jump on it, let me tell you. Okay, all of you have to do introductions. So, and all of you have something to do with official business, all right? All this is in the new, or a lot of this, in the new lodge officer's handbook. I swear it really will exist. <laughs> If we oh, live long enough, we will see. By the end of March, we should have a published. Uh, well, today's the eyes, so. Okay. So, Ooh. we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. There's a new one. Go, 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 uh, Revise should be coming out. If you buy the complete copy of the new standard work, it will have a lodge officer's handbook and a tab in the back. So. All right. Official visits. If two, if Grandmaster or your district meeting and you have official visit <laughs> of your district deputy. So, your district deputy comes to visit. Why is this different? Any other time he comes to visit, he he represents represents because, he <laughs> because he is the yes. He basically uh, does does directly represent the grand man. By the way, anybody know where the district deputy signs the Tyler's uh, register when he comes on official visit? At the time. Anybody know where the grand master always signs? Very top of the page, above everything else. Really. He signs at the very top of the page as the grand master. When the district deputy comes to visit, on his official visit, that's where he signs. He signs it across the top because he is, at that particular meeting, a direct representative of the Grand Master. Your district deputy does not directly represent the Grand Master in his normal duties. He reports to the Grand Master, he's kind of the eyes and ears, he should be there as a resource for your lodge and your district. That's what he should be doing. Okay? But he does not directly represent the Grand Master except his official <coughs> He should be accorded many of the courtesies of the Grand Master. Not all of them. Okay. So, you're the senior deacon. Worshipful Master says, seek out District Deputy. Present him at the altar. You take him to the altar, present him to the Worshipful Master. Hopefully the worship master knows he is to step down, come to the altar, and escort the district deputy up to the east. You as senior deacon should not be taking him directly to the east. Hmm. Yes? So how far does the senior deacon's presentation go? Does he go all the way for district deputy, de district blah, 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 pre accepted, or then does the worshipful master take over from there and go all the way up? Worship master comes down and receives the district deputy from the senior deacon. So the senior deacon says nothing. Oh, no contrary. He presents, okay. Okay. He presents okay. him to the worshipful master. Uh, we'll get into that too. So. Okay, do we have All right. Yeah. No, 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 no. All right. Worshipful master brings up, raises the lodge, and introduces the district deputy to the lodge in Fortson, the grand honors of Mason. Shouldn't the lodge already be up? Uh, well, hopefully the master will have 
raise the lodge when he comes down. If he doesn't, he has to he needs to raise the lodge needs to be standing when the district deputy is introduced. Okay? Just like you would for the Grand Master. Presented or introduced? Introduced. Not when he's presented at the altar. Now the worshipful master may, before he steps down, raise the lodge. Either way, when the when the district deputy is introduced from the east, the lodge should be standing. Okay? If if the master fails to do that, does the senior warden raise the lodge then? Talk with your worshipful master. <laughs> <laughs> my opinion, yes. But that is only my opinion. Okay, because it, it can be forgotten just like you were Sure. Uh, of course, when I was master, I never, okay, every time somebody got to bang the gavel for me or remind me or whatever. So, yes. But, yeah, it should be, you know, should be raised because giving them the, the public grand honors. Every time public grand honors are given, the lot should be standing. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. When the senior deacon is introducing the district deputy Present. in, um, he's presenting him to the worshipful master. Correct. Yes. Now, is he doing that any differently when he's uh, an official visit versus not official? No. Well, I'll tell you. The answer to that is no. However, my opinion, been past deputy, the only time I brought to the altar and presented and brought to the east, in my opinion, should be my official visit. I'm coming to the lodge for fellowship. I'm just another brother. I should be sitting on the sidelines, kibitzing with the past master. I didn't do it that way when I was master. <laughs> but uh, again, this is up to your master if he's going to bring him to the east every time or whatever. This, on his official visit, should be, it's not mandatory. Of course, the master can do anything he wants to. Of course, he's Got to work with the district deputy and the grand master, so yeah. But so our district deputy is also our secretary. Yes. And he gets introduced at every meeting. <coughs> we have official visit every meeting, of course. We just have one a year. That's correct. And at the official visit, we'll meet him at the altar, and I will uh, yes. present him, and then the worship master will come down. At the stated meetings, when it's the secretary. Uh, being the senior deacon, I would walk around all the way around. And, you know, sometimes the worship master wants him in the east. Sometimes he just stands and introduces himself, depending on actually what Jerry wants. Exactly. You know, I don't know. We'll just do it. Yeah. It's just, yeah, you know, friends, if you introduce me to the sideline, don't introduce me at all. Yeah. No. My personal feeling is if I'm your district deputy and you don't know who I am, that's my fault. Shame on me. I should be visiting your lodge often enough that you know who I am, but not so often that I'm not welcome. Again, <laughs> okay, my case, well, never mind. But here again, it's up to your worshipful master what he's going to do, how he's going to be introducing the district deputy. If he's just going to introduce him to the sideline, uh, as a district deputy, I actually got kind of tired of walking up to the east every time. I just said, hey, I'm here, I'm here as a brother. Just if you want to introduce me, introduce me to the sidelines. But here it's up to your worshipful master. Okay? So, go through. District deputy responds. He is the last one, just like the worship the Grand Master. He is the last one to respond at the good of the order. Before the minutes are read, how can the secretary record what the district deputy said if you do it after the minutes are written? So it's the good of the order. What happens if the Grand Master's there? This just happened. Grand Master came. He was making a surprise visit. He was in town. Came up, sat, and, and oh, didn't realize this is your official visit. Well, of course, you have the Grand Master come to the East. What happens? Well, if you're a worshipful master, you offer it to the district deputy. If the district deputy is adroit, he is going to defer to the Grand Master. And if the Grand Master is quick, he will just give it all right back to the district deputy. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that, okay? But make sure that uh, district deputy is the last one to speak. And when you are master, make sure you ask the district deputy if he would like to close your lodge. 
It is a courtesy you give to the Grand Master. It should be a courtesy you give to the district deputy as well. I have a question. If yes. The district deputy declines and sits in the lot and so that he is, would you still ask him to vote? Uh, you can. But if he's on the sidelines, uh, well, first off, he probably won't be on the sidelines if it's official, his official visit. But if he's just there as a brother, no. Only at his official visit should the master ask him to close. All right. We're talking about senior deacon presenting the district deputy to the worshipful master in the east. Senior deacons, learn this phrase until it knows from your lips. <laughs> Very worshipful brother Richard Beers, deputy of the Grand Master District 2 of the most worshipful Grand Lodge of free and accepted Masons of Washington. Yeah. You should be able to say that without hesitation. Practice it at the lodge, at the altar, because that's where you're going to be saying it. Learn that phrase. If you learn that phrase, you'll be using lots of that for other introductions as well. Yes. So you don't say district number. District, yeah. the deputy of the Grand Master in District, district. 2. Yeah, okay. Of the most versatile Grand Lodge reading so Let's lead off the number. Yeah, he's not the district deputy in District 2 of the Grand Master. Right. He's a deputy of the Grand Master in District 2, District 8. Do you present? Right? Mm -hmm. Do you present? I present? If you're the senior deacon and you're at the altar, who do you introduce? What what people do you introduce at the altar? It's a trick question. It's a trick question. If you're the senior deacon and you're at the altar, you never introduce anybody. You're presenting them to the worshipful master. Hey, Bob. Yes. What if uh, the master is a district deputy? Uh, can't be. Okay. Not supposed to ever have a sitting master as a deputy. Okay. And he shouldn't be a senior warden or a junior warden either. Should be a past master. Okay. Clear. What happens in the event that's not a If uh, he is not a past master? He's a current standing master. If he's a standing master, I don't know of any deputy who is. Uh, however, that is a, a conflict. The reason it's a conflict is the district deputy is there to make you're sure your lodge does not get into trouble. Who does he go to <laughs> if, if he's finding the lodge has the problems? <coughs> does he go to himself as master? Mm, no, it's a conflict of interest. So, you should never have a sitting master as a district deputy. All right, the Grand Master's visiting. He doesn't really have a, quote, official visit, unquote. You have a regional or district meeting, which is different than what we're talking about here. He's coming into your lodge. It's either a scheduled visit, or he is saying he's coming to your district and coming to your lodge, that is his quote unquote official visit, or it's one of the wonderful surprise visits that everybody is excited about. All right, Grandmaster is seated on the sidelines. Again, Grandmaster is always introduced last. You go through. Oh, good. Uh, in your book, uh, you will say, seek out a Grandmaster and escort him to the east. Cross that out. That's not right. Um, uh, oh, it is. And present him at the altar. Okay. Present him at the altar. No. Oh. <laughs> That's that, that too? Yeah. Seek out our Grandmaster and. Yes. You don't tell the Grandmaster, hey, you're coming with me. What you do is, as senior deacon, you come to the Grandmaster and inform him that the Worshipful Master and the Lodge awaits his will and pleasure. Okay? It's another 
phrase you need to have. Most worshipful sir, been advised by the worshipful master that the lodge awaits your will and pleasure. That's how the worshipful master should be instructing you as a senior deacon to go seek out the grand master. He's on the sidelines. Also, always with courtesy, no matter what visitor you're going to pick up and escort or conduct, always have a phrase to say, practice your phrases. You need maybe two phrases, but practice them. So you aren't there going, uh, would you uh, uh, stand up, you got to come with me, we're going to uh, have something to say. Most worshipful sir, would you do me the honor of accompanying me to the altar? After you said the lodge awaits his will and pleasure. Or, most worshipful grand master, please allow me to escort you to the altar. Have a couple of phrases. You will use them not only with the grand master, you'll use them with the district deputy. But have some key phrases, practice them out loud in the lodge room. I can say those things perfectly in the shower. <laughs> I get to the lodge room and all of a sudden it's uh, 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 water on you quick. Uh, <laughs> all right. Another phrase for all you senior deacons and when you are worshipful master. Most worshipful brother, Bruce E. Best, Bruce E. Vespers, Grand Master of the most worshipful Grand Lodge, Phoenix Center Basins of Washington. I guarantee you, as a senior deacon, you will need to do this at least once, probably twice. As worshipful master, you probably will be doing it more often than you think you're going to be doing it. Okay? Again, of the most worshipful Grand Lodge, Phoenix Center Basins of Washington. You already have that down because you were introduced to the district deputy. So, this is how you introduce the Grand Master. There is an old alternate to saying Grand Master of Masons of Washington, but this is the one that's probably the most recognized. This is how you present the Grand Master to the Worshipful Master. This is how the Worshipful Master introduces the Grand Master to the Lodge. All right. Now, if the Grand Master let me put it a different way. If there's a knock on the door, the junior deacon comes over, the worship master instructs him, he opens the door, and the tithers are quaking in his boots going, Grand Master's here. And then the junior deacon comes in, pale and white, going, Worshipful Master, the Grand Master awaits without the door. If your worshipful master is sharp, what he will do will be instruct the senior deacon We'll seek out the Grand Master and, even though he's on the outer door, <coughs> inform him that the Lodge awaits his will and pleasure, and he will probably appoint an escort, a past master, to accompany the senior deacon to be the escort for the Grand Master. So, come in, senior deacon, you present them at the altar, which works for brother, no, and his escort. Worshipful brother so and so, or if Sam comes with the worshipful master, right worshipful brother Sam Roberts, or whoever his escort is, you, even if he's a member of your lodge, you introduce him as the escort of the grand master. So, yes. so which of them will take his arm if the senior will the senior deacon or the escort take his arm as the no, senior deacon is escorting? Okay. The escort is just there as a courtesy to the grand master. Okay. Yes, to the altar. Pardon? Just to the altar. Just to the altar, presenting him to the worshipful yeah, master. Then, then the worshipful master has to him if he wants to go to the east, then him on up to the east. That's correct. The worshipful master will come down, escort the grand master. Now, the escort, if he's a member of the lodge, may go sit down at that point. That's between the worshipful master and the escort. It was just a courtesy to bring him into the lodge. If he is accompanying the grand master, he will still probably go sit down on the sidelines if it's grand another Grand Lodge officer. Because he's not being introduced, Grand Master is being introduced. Okay? Even though 
Grandmaster is supposed to be introduced last. Grandmaster will probably introduce his escort. Okay? If the escort comes up with the Grandmaster, then the Worshipful Master should introduce the Grandmaster and his escort, just like you as a senior deacon would introduce him, or present him at the altar. You can get a little complicated. Fortunately, you as a senior deacon just got to take him to the altar and present him to the Worshipful Master and then step back. It's their problem. <laughs> okay. When the Grand Master enters the lodge, or if he's at the sidelines and he stands up, everybody rises. No gamble, it's automatic. If he's coming through the door, as soon as he enters through that door frame, everyone stands. If he's in the sidelines, you a senior deacon, which master, most of will serve, he's company. And as soon as he stands up, every member of the lodge should be standing up. Okay? <coughs> there is a section in the New Lodge Officer's Handbook and the Old Lodge Officer's Handbook that explains all of this. If you were in here before, I recommended that you read that section or request that the Worshipful Master read that section to the Lodge, the first or second meeting, so everybody is reminded, there's no gavel, you stand up, what are you supposed to be doing, and after you come back into your dark during the summer, read it again, because you have a new Grand Master and he may be visiting your Lodge, okay? Read that section, so all the brethren are reminded that they stand up, and the Worshipful Master doesn't gavel. It's embarrassing if he hates because he has to gather. All right? Okay. So, your ranks for the Grand Master sitting on the sidelines. Your worshipful master bangs the gavel and says, Brother Senior Deacon, please conduct the Grand Master to the east. Well, you've just been told that you don't do that. What do you do? Okay, you have two choices. And this is an answer that I can't give you. You've got to figure this one out in your own mind. You can tick off the Grand Master, or you can tick off your own Worshipful Master. Okay? Those are your choices. If, the, if your Worshipful Master says to conduct the Grand Master to the east, it's probably because it was a surprise as he's going. Oh, he's here. What do I do? If you keep your head a senior deacon, go to the Grand Master and say, Most worshipful sir, the uh, worshipful master wishes me to inform you that the lodge awaits his, your will and pleasure. Hopefully that may calm down your own worshipful master a bit so we can go, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to judge that on how your worshipful master is going to take that. If your worshipful master is one that says, if you command, you better do what I tell you to do, then you do what the worshipful master tells you. And the guards follow the man. But if you know the procedure and what you're supposed to do, you might want to bring the grandmaster to the altar, present him to the worshipful master, step back and go, <laughs> Again, I can't tell you what's right and what's wrong. It's going to be up to you because you know your worst master better than I do. Okay? Sign languages that give you All right. Introductions. Senior deacons making introductions. Junior wardens make introductions. Senior wardens make introductions. Worshipful masters make introductions. When do introductions begin? No looking at the paper. No cheating. For a senior deacon, it's before the meeting starts. As a senior deacon, before the meeting starts, you set up lodge, where should you be? Tyler. <coughs> Exactly. You should be there with the Tyler and with the Junior Deacon, greeting all the brethren, visitors and members. 
you should make sure you have the Tyler and the Junior Deacon with you because there's going to be this influx of brethren. You're not going to be able to handle all of them. Make sure everybody signs either the member or the visitor's registration or fills out a visitor's card. That is one of your duties as the Senior Deacon and the Junior Deacon. Oh, okay. There is a sample, and it's a real simplistic sample on page 183 in your index, of a visitor's card. You should have a name, the office, if they're holding an office, their lodge and lodge number, and I would put in there affiliation because you are going to have visitors outside of our own jurisdiction. You want to make sure you know that he is a brother visiting from Philadelphia. You want to know for a couple of reasons. First, you've got to have somebody vouch for him. And if nobody can vouch for him, you have to make sure, as the senior deacon, that the lodge he belongs to is a recognized lodge in our jurisdiction. The way you do that is there is a roster of lodges that your secretary should have. Every lodge in the world is in that every recognized lodge in the world is in that roster. If you have a brother from New Zealand, you have been in New Zealand, you check to see that his lodge is recognized by our jurisdiction. Okay? Then, as a senior deacon, you need to do an examination. If you're in here before, my suggestion was, first you're going to ask him for his dues card. Have your dues card out. It's a courtesy, brother. Here's my dues card, it's current. Could I see your dues card, your current dues card? It's a courtesy. You're asking him for his dues card, he should be able to see yours. Okay? Lodge Officer's Handbook has a step-by-step -step, uh, examination of visitors. It's a great one. The new Lodge Officer's Handbook, it will exist, I swear. <laughs> has a I've very, heard that before. Yeah, <laughs> has a very good step-by-step -step section. The old one does, too. But the new one, it flows a little bit better. Okay? Who do you give the visitor's cards to? You have them fill out, they give them to you. What do you do with them? Secretary. Secretary. The senior deacon? Secretary. Hmm? Senior deacon, Secretary. and then he can dole them up to the junior warden and the senior warden, and then afterwards, they all go to the secretary. Absolutely. Visiting war senior wardens go to the visiting senior warden, visiting junior wardens go to the junior warden, visiting the masters go to the master. You keep all the rest. Because, of course, you're going to be introducing all the visitors. <clears throat> all right. After the meeting, make sure you go around, gather all the cards, and give them to the secretary so the secretary can enter the names spelled correctly with the correct lodges into the minutes. <coughs> Thank you a whole bunch for that. Here's another phrase. With the exception of sitting masters, wardens, Grand Lodge officers, committeemen, and deputies of the Grand Master. Well, all visitors please rise. If you're a senior deacon, or when you're a worshipful master, every meeting, you're going to be saying this. So, it's another one to let flow off your lips, to memorize, to make sure you have it. So it's not, um, yeah, committeemen, no, you sit down, uh, have the phrase memorized, so you can do it without hesitation. Okay? Wow. Yes. Yeah. Who says that? The worshipful master says it to the senior deacon. Brother senior okay. deacon, with right. the exception of... So the please, senior deacon uh, just has to recognize that. He doesn't have to say that. He should. He would, yeah. Senior deacon should say it because worshipful master is issuing the order of the senior deacon. The senior deacon is We're requesting the visitors to rise. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, the worshipful master instructs you to introduce all the visitors, with the exception of all the visitors. Hey, it's Phil the Lodge night. There's 20 visitors that stand up. What do you do? You have all of their cards, so <laughs> right there. I can't answer this one for you either. What do you do? Please introduce yourself. <laughs> well, yeah, that's how I... 
do when I was senior deacon. However, if you know the brethren, it's great if you can introduce them all with their lodge number and use the uh, junior deacon lodge 121. Uh, if you can do it, great. I, I never could. If you can do it, you should if you can. Like I said, we could fill the lodge night with 37 visitors. I couldn't do it. We always have a bunch of visitors at our lodge, too, so it's always 15, 20 different people there. Yeah. Lodge. So, brethren, my apologies. I don't want to mispronounce your names or get your lodges wrong. Would you please introduce yourself and if you have an office, uh, your office in your lodge? Okay. And then, Again, have another phrase. Would you please join with me in welcoming these brothers to the lodge? Or please give a round of applause too. Again, have some key phrases so you're not, uh, yeah, let's, uh, we'd be part of the platform. Uh, thank, thanks for coming. Have some phrases in your mind that come out of your mouth. It makes it just much more pleasant for the visitors, much more pleasant for. Uh, all the lodge members, if you have those phrases, key phrases, ready to go. Okay, so, Worshipful Master instructs you to either conduct someone or escort someone. This one, I hope I don't confuse you because I have to remember it a different way than it is told in the Lodge Officer's Handbook or is explained to me as a senior deacon, I had to make it clear, C-L-E-R, clear to myself. I did it with what arm I was going to conduct or escort. I don't care if you're standing this way, standing that way. I know if I'm going to conduct you, I'm going to do it with my left arm. I'm not going to drag you up backwards, so I'm automatically going to go to your proper side. Okay. You are told that you conduct on the right side. Well, if you're on the right side, you're conducting with your left arm. And I'm slow. I'll stand up there and go, I'm going to conduct you, set your right, <coughs> you know, put left, right, left, okay, I'm going to, you can go on your this side. If I know I'm conducting with my left arm, I'm automatically going to go to the correct side to conduct. Okay, so you always conduct non-Masons and candidates for your left arm, yes. Now, didn't you say a little bit earlier that you, uh, that the, uh, we're, the uh, Grand Master gets conducted? No. That's what the I said the Worshipful Master may instruct you. Right. To conduct him. Well, then would you conduct him with your left arm? Well, I will tell you, <laughs> nobody conducts the Grand Master, <laughs> period. Oh, okay. The Grand Master isn't there to have somebody conduct him. He's the one. He knows the way. Yeah, he knew, he's, well, he's the one to come into your lodge and he can remove your charter and walk out the door with it. He has not the ultimate power, but he is the leader of Masons in Washington. Nobody conducts the Grand Master. You escort him. But if you're instructed to conduct the Grand Master, that's the decision <laughs> you're going to have to make. So what if the if the worship master says conduct the grand master, would I conduct him with my left arm? Now you, no, you, you no. hear conduct, but you do escort. <laughs> yes. Yes. I can't. You may hear conduct, well, but you escort. I can't tell you what's right and wrong there. I know what I would do, but if your worshipful master tells you you have to conduct him, okay. you gonna, yeah, you're gonna do it, escort him, or are you going to conduct him? Escort him. Again, that's a decision that you're going to have to make. Okay, thank you. Personally, I would never conduct a grand master. You let him walk himself over there, you mean? No, you escort him. No, no, no. You escort him. Escort You escort him, yes. When but, you're right. Yeah. Because you're conducting with your left arm, you escort with your, remember, it's your arm. This is the arm you're escorting with. The Lodge Officer's Handbook is telling you you're going to be escorting a brother on his left side. What well, are you going to do it with your right arm? This is the only way I remembered it when I was senior deacon. I conduct with my right arm. I'm automatically going to go to the correct side of the person I'm escorting 
with my right arm. If I remember that. Okay? If you're senior deacon and you're told to escort, you know you're going to go with the right arm? Pick your rod, put it in your left arm, in your left hand. That way, you <coughs> your right hand is free and you're ready to go escort. If you're going to conduct, put your rod in the right hand because you know you're going to go conduct with your left arm. Does the worship master make that determination to tell the deacon? To tell the deacon where the conductor scored? Yes. Uh, you should know, he yes. He will tell the senior deacon that. He will say, Brother Senior Deacon, would you conduct our guest speaker to the east? Okay. Or would you conduct my wife to the east? Or conduct the candidate? Or escort brother to the east? Yeah. He should know the difference. The key is, do you know the difference? Do you know what you should be doing? I would assume that there will be exceptions, or should exceptions, or exceptions should be made for disabilities, either on the candidate, yes. or the master, or, oh, or even absolutely the yes. If there is a brother uh, in a wheelchair, you're obviously you're not going to conduct him or escort him. Escort him. You're going to assist him. Mm -hmm. He may not want you to touch the chair. Ask him what he would like to do. If you have someone who is sight impaired, if you have a guest speaker that you were going to conduct, ask them. You're not going to grasp them with their arms. Most sight impaired people do not like to have that done. Put your hand on their elbow and say, I'm going to guide you up to the east. Would it be okay if I just did this by your elbow? Ask them what they would like you to do. Okay? So, yes. Make, make allowances for uh, brethren or visitors who, who may be uh, impaired or who are not able to conduct or escort them like you normally would. Okay? Everybody got this down? You know exactly what you're going to do now? Mm -hmm. no. I was a senior deacon for two years. It took me two years to figure this out. So. <laughs> All right. You think of your left arm, you conduct non-Masons and candidates. Now the way to remember it, I just learned this one today, I thought it was great. You're going to conduct your wife. Your wedding ring is on your left hand, so you can conduct her with your left hand. A brother, I have a Masonic ring on my right hand. I'm going to conduct all brothers with my right hand. So. Just another little, little key. Yeah. Provided you make sure you get the rings on the end. Okay. <laughs> All right. When you are conducting a candidate, what do we do with an apprentice a candidate? Make him strip down, wear funny pajamas, blindfold him, take him to the door, stab him in the chest, put him on the ground, make him pray, have him stand up and say, You're going to die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then we tell them, you know, rise, follow your conductor and fear no danger. Yeah, thanks, you just stabbed me, I'm blindfolded, I don't know where I'm going, and I'm supposed to fear no danger. What experience am I going to have next? When you conduct a candidate, make sure you get your arm up in here and bring him in so he feels secure when you are conducting him. Okay? There is nothing worse and walking with a candidate, and all of a sudden you hear a boom, oh, ah! and you look down, you just walk by one of the stations, and you have one of those marble kneeling or marble pads, and he's just ripped his toenail open on the pad. Make sure you bring him safe. <laughs> have a senior deacon, who is actually a past grand senior deacon, who actually will take a candidate when he's out of the prep room, say, close your eyes, take him, say, okay, we're going to go to the right, all right, take four steps, go to the left, okay. Take four steps. All right. Open your eyes. He has them about two inches from the wall. And he tells them, you, excuse me, you are in my hands. I will not let you be hurt or damaged at all. You can trust what I am doing. I thought that was a great thing, especially since the first time I did a candidate, I ran him into the altar. I saw him so I did not move. Make sure. Again, with a candidate, 
You don't fish harm them, get them secure. With non-Masonic, you can just conduct them, of course, they'll be able to see where they're going. Sight impaired, again, do not grasp their arm and elbow. Just put your arm into your arm. Just put your hand on their elbow, ask them how they want to be conducted. All right, escort with your right arm. When you are escorting, you are escorting a brother. It is a courtesy. The brother should know where he's going. You are just there to guide him. All right? And always with courtesy, whether it's visitors or with a brother. Brother, would you please accompany me to the east? Same thing with the visitor. Would you please allow me to conduct you to the east or the south or wherever you're going? All right. First school master instructs you as a senior deacon to seek out all the committee men, bring them to the east facing west. We should know in what order we're supposed to be in. Don't worry about it. If you're a senior deacon, you just get us up to the east. We should be able to arrange ourselves. If we can't, it's our fault, not your fault. We're supposed to know, and we have an order. Elected, appointed Grand Lodge, deputies, committeemen. We're supposed to arrange ourselves. So you don't have to worry about that. When you are <coughs> when you are instructed to seek out all the committee men, oh boy. Like I said before, it took me hours to make this. <laughs> this is a representation of the lab room. That's amazing. You? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. <laughs> When you're senior deacon, all the committeemen rise, you go to the very farthest point <laughs> and get the last person standing and bring them to the east and you just ask the other uh, brethren to follow along and form into the east. Now when you do that, make sure you remember who the last person was you took up there. Because as soon as they get up there, we're all going to rearrange ourselves. So make sure you know who that person was. So when the worshipful master says, please uh, escort them back to the seats, you can go to that person. Oh, oh, I got six minutes. Okay, so you know that person, you take them away. No. Bring them again from the east all the way back to their station. And then everyone will be seated. Okay? Got that? Yes? I've actually been taught that they return themselves. Pardon me? In my district, they've been teaching us that they would return themselves to this. Oh, okay. Well, again, the worshipful master may instruct you. You may just say, okay, get out. Sometimes they just say, that. Hey, yeah. Ahead, so, but, you know, formally, you should be conducting that last person or escorting that last person. Uh, brother, back to his seat. All right? Okay, again, have your phrases prepared. It is my pleasure to introduce Brother So and so. Please join with me in welcoming him into the lodge. Yes? Quick question. So, when you're bringing the committee men and whomever yes. up to the east, yes. and you're saying they're putting themselves in order, yes. Where are they putting themselves in order? Are they crossing the light? Or how are they putting themselves no, in order? No, because what happens is the worshipful master instructs you to bring them to the east facing west. He steps down and he is here at the altar getting ready to introduce them. So they are not coming in behind front of him. him. Yeah, okay. they will be behind okay. him. Okay. And then they will all form here. He will introduce them all. And of course, we've rearranged ourselves for the last guy that's down in the middle. All right. So, no, a good Thank question. You. No, you shouldn't have that problem. All right. Have, again, phrases so you're not fumbling. My honor to present very worshipful brother or worshipful brother office affiliation. All right. Everything you need to know about introductions and presentations. It is titled, there's only five, brother, worshipful brother, very worshipful brother, right worshipful brother, or most worshipful brethren. If you're not sure, no brother should ever be insulted by you calling him Brother Fred Smith. 
If I'm a very worshipful brother and I'm introduced as a brother, fine with me. I'm a brother. You know, there's so many titles we have anyway. I'm here as a brother. Okay? He may say, no, I'm a very worshipful brother. Fine. That's good. You should have a name tag so you can read it anyway. All right? So it's title. Name. Know how to pronounce the name. In my district, we have many brethren from the Philippines. It is not Cicero Dumatic, it is Cicero Dumida. If you have to ask once, twice, or three times, make sure you understand it. So you can introduce him properly to your lodge, all right? Office. Master Warden, Deputy Grand Master, Grand Senior Warden, uh, whatever. But it's titled name, office, and affiliation. Lodge number such and such, or of the most worshipful Grand Lodge of Alaska, or Worshipful Grand Lodge, or of the most Worshipful Grand Lodge, this is wrong, it should be ancient creating set the basins of the Yukon and, the, and British Columbia. But it's title, name, office, affiliation. That's all you have to remember. <laughs> Among a thousand other things. <laughs> Don't worry, we're stepping up. Well, Again, we're here. <laughs> this is, this <laughs> phrase you will use. You've uh, you already seen a number of places where you use the most worshipful Grand Lodge of Great Accepted Masons of Washington. All right? Senior deacons, learn that. If you're presenting multiple Grand Lodge officers at the altar, you don't have to say, this is. Very worshipful brother of the most worshipful grand lodge. This is very worshipful brother. You can say all of the most worshipful grand lodge for the base in Washington at the very end of the presentation, or for worshipful master at the introductions. <laughs> you don't have to say to every single brother you introduce. <coughs> no name tag? What do you think is no name tag? Cable tell. That's right. Get him out of here. <laughs> He should be wearing a name tag. Do not be ashamed of asking him what his name is. I'm at a period in my life that I can look at Brian and go, I know you. What was your name again? If he's not wearing a name tag, that's not on you. You may have to ask him his name. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Ask him his name to make sure you get it right. Oops. I'm going backwards. All right. Practice these presentations. Practice them out loud. Practice them out loud in the lodge room. At the altar. If you're the senior deacon, make sure you do it at the altar. If you're senior warden, you're going to do it at the altar as well. You can do it to your mirror. You can do it to your windshield. When you get to lodge, for some reason, it just seems to be a little different. Many of you have had step up night and gone up to the east as doing a uh, taking the worshipful master's position. You already know. You get up there and you look out, it's a total different perspective. It's like, oh, wow, this is different. <laughs> so, practice in the lodge room where you're going to be doing these things until you can do it without hesitation. And once you have all that, have some fun. I loved being a, a senior deacon. I had a great time. I had, I, you may not know any of these. Well, you know, most worshipful brother Chuck McQuarrie, very worshipful brother John Henry Williams, very worshipful brother Ken Callahan, and very worshipful brother Norm Watts. They were always coming to the lodge, were members of my lodge. Before they got up there, they would exchange all their new bags. <laughs> I was new. I knew very worshipful brother Norm. I sort of knew Chuck. I sort of knew John Henry. They would come up, stand there, I'd look at them, so I'd introduce them. This is apparently Burr's brother Norm Watts. He's changed since I lost, saw him, and he's a lot more handsome, but he's a member of such a thing. When you learn all of this stuff, have some fun with it. I had a great time this senior deacon. And your brother, my time is up. Uh, I'm Bob Geiger, and I would like to thank you all for your attention and being here this weekend. We greatly appreciate your participation. So that's it for me. Thank you.